You know, uh, there's so much going on in the world today. There's so many things to talk about, but there's so many things that we're not ready for. We're ready for Jesus. We might not understand everything that's going on in the world around us. But we know one sure thing, the spirit that dwells within inside of us lets us know that it's time to go home. And we know our Lord and Savior is coming because the Father's waiting. He's ready to come. How much more can this world endure? How much more can this body endure? More than what we think, probably. More than what we would hope for, probably. But yet we know without the shadow of a doubt, on that old rugged cross, God Himself manifested in the flesh, His Son, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, came to this earth the King of kings, the Lord of lords came to this earth to the people and the world in which He created. You following me? The world in which He created came in the form of flesh and made Himself a suffering servant. A suffering servant. He said, Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. We live like kings. But yet when the king came, he lived like a servant. We need to suffer as a servant for His name's sake so that He could be glorified through us. We have to put our things aside. That's the whole point of this church. He indwells the body of the church. We are to be living for Him. Just as He suffered, we are to suffer. But we've got things all mixed up. We're blessed. Yes, we are because all these things that He's given us. But God, He had the whole world. He created it all. It was all His. And what did He do? He put it all aside for you and I. He put it all aside so that He could suffer and die upon a cross be beaten and have his beard plucked, be mocked and have his clothes rent from his body for the whole world to see. So that you and I could have hope of an everlasting life. That you and I could see the love manifested from Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. That we would be willing and able to suffer for His sake. We need to be willing to suffer for His sake. Because this world is being overcome by evil. But see, the church has been so diluted that we don't see the evil around us. Because we're full of the world. I'm not saying this church, but the church in a whole. Yes. They don't see all the evils that are compassing us about. It is our job to love our enemies. Pray for those that persecute us and despitefully use us. That's our job. It's not to bring them in. 
It's not to take the world into the body of Christ, but it's to let the light of Christ shine out into the world so that they would see the error of their ways and that they would be ashamed because it's Jesus Christ. It's the Word of God that does the work. It's not us. We just bring it forth and the Word does the work. God does the work. You can't bring all this stuff into your house and expect it not to pollute your house. You have to keep it out. But see, the world doesn't see it that way. Why? Because the true church, our home isn't here. Our kingdom is in heaven. That's what we're striving for, is to bring people into that fold, into the kingdom of heaven. For as long as Christ walked in this earth, He was the light of the world. But now, He sits at the right hand of the Father. And the only way His light shines is through His church. We are to be that light, that light that ever so shineth so brightly. Because light, darkness hates the light. And we know this. We know this. We don't belong here. And if you think you belong here, you need to get on your knees and ask God to reveal Himself to you. For whether I live, I live unto the Lord. Or whether I die, I die unto the Lord. Because we are all His. We are all His. David wrote in 1 Chronicles 29 and 15, he says, For we are strangers before thee. Talking to God, said he was praying. He said, For we are strangers before thee and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. Our days on earth are like a shadow, he said. And there's none abiding. We are strangers before God. Strangers before God. This is David praying. But see, one thing that we have now is Jesus Christ, who's brought us into the kingdom of God. We read it last week, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, through the spirit of adoption. Psalms 102 and 11 says, My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass, but thou, o Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. We are a shadow. What's it take to create a shadow? It takes light. That's why the law was a shadow of things to come and Jesus Christ is the light. Amen. Amen. We are, David said, but like a shadow. But like a shadow. And strangers. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9, says, But ye are a chosen generation, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He has called you and chosen you out of this world in which we are strangers into His royal, into His marvelous light, into the light of Christ, into His marvelous light. 
We are no more of this world if you've accepted Jesus Christ into your life. But He has called us to be a peculiar people. Why are you peculiar? Because you don't agree with everything else that's going on in the world. You don't agree. And people look at you like you're crazy. I had a fella total out my truck the other day. It's the second one he's done tore up. And I looked at him and I said, Boy, you know how lucky you are. You better thank God because he wasn't hurt. I've, been, I've lost two friends in the same exact scenario that, that are in the ground. But yet he wasn't hurt and neither was anybody else. I said, boy, you know how lucky you are. Because you could be dead. Not only that, you could have killed or hurt someone else. But God is merciful. And that's what I told him. God is merciful. Better get on your knees and thank God for not letting you get hurt. I lost a truck, but I thank God. I was praising God because he wasn't hurt and nobody else was hurt. But see, when things happen in our lives, we always look to the bad. We always take the worst case scenario. Then we try to make that our problem and make that our burden. It's not ours. God's done took care of that. God's done took care of all these problems. Sometimes we generate our own problems and God will use them to get our attention. We might end up in a hospital. We might end up in bankruptcy. We might end up in debtor's court. We may end up in jail. But those are things, a lot of times we bring them on ourselves. But if I'm in jail for praising God and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm going to be shouting and I'm going to be singing. If my house burns to the ground and my family's saved, I'm going to be shouting and I'm going to be singing because that's earthly things. Those are earthly things. If I die today, don't worry about me. I'm going to be shouting and I'm going to be singing because I'm going to be with my Lord and Savior. That's, the, that's how us as Christians are to perceive things. It's not the material possessions of this life. It's not things that we can heap up to ourselves. All those things are going to fade away. They're all going to perish. We need to be building up things to Him. Glorifying God in our walk. We don't belong here. And the more things we accumulate here, the more anchors that we've got holding us down to this earth. I'm telling you, there's things going on in the heavenlies. There's things going on in this world that will blow your mind. I have a hard time conceiving it. But yet, I believe in an almighty God. And I know His words and these things will come to pass and they're coming ever so fast. The waters broke. Those birth pains, they've started. The end is near for this world. But yet, I can see the light. Breaching forth from the womb, I can see the light. And we're ready. We've got to be ready. Whatever's holding you back, whatever's weighing you down and anchoring you in this world and keeping your focus on the God, I ask you to be like Jesus and be willing to suffer as a servant. Put it all aside. Put it all aside. I ain't saying you got to drop it all at once, but hey, little by little, a little sip, hey, I'm not going to drink it today. A little smoke, I'm not going to smoke it today. Do I need to go over here and do this, go shopping? I'm not going to go today. I'm going to take that time for the Lord. I'm going to take that time and spend it with my Savior. 
I want to go on vacation. I'm going to take that week. And I'm going to take the Word of God and I'm going to spend it with Him. Not doing what I want to do. But I ought to be wanting to do that. But we got to make sacrifices. We have to be obedient. For obedience is better than sacrifice. And once you start taking that time and filling that void, filling that whatever, whatever that fleshly desire is, you need to fill it with the Spirit of God. Whatever it may be. We suffer with addictions. We suffer with our kids, doing things with our kids. You know, we, instead of teaching them the ways of the cross, we're teaching them other things of the world. Maybe we need to stop and think. There's nothing wrong with teaching them things, but you've got to teach them to do it in a godly manner. The Bible says there's profit in all labor, and if man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat, Paul said. But so we have to teach them things, but what it is that we're teaching them and how we're teaching them is what's going to determine their walk in life. For we are strangers in this land. I forgot where I was at. Verse 10, back in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read 9 again. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Showing forth His praises. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech ye as strangers and pilgrims, he said, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. He says, abstain from fleshly lust at war against which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day a visitation by your good word. He said, I beseech you as strangers. We were strangers. When the word of God came into us and the spirit of God dwelt, come into us, before that we were strangers to him. We were but a shadow in the midst of Almighty God. But yet through the word of God, he has called us out. He has set us apart that we are no more strangers to Him to as many as them that believe gave He the power to become the sons of God. If we believed, He has called us out that we are no more strangers. And if we're sojourning in a world to which we don't belong, a world in which we are strangers, I'm yearning to see Him that's called me. The one that's called and set us apart. That's caused us to be separate. That's called us to be to do the, will, do the work of an evangelist. To share His gospel. I'm looking for Him because that's who I've been following. And I want to see Him. That's the way we ought to be looking towards our redemption. I want to see Him. Who has called me? Verse 13 says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. These are instructions for us. He's saying, I've left you here. You're here. We're in this world. He gave us instructions on how we are to conduct ourselves into this world. In this world. Why? So that He could be glorified. Not so that our pride could bud forth or that we could beat our chest and raise, shake our fist in the air. But He's saying, submit yourself to every ordinance of man. Boy, that's hard. Because we know that man's heart is evil. And we have to submit ourselves to every ordinance of man. But we do it for the Lord's sake. 
or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Verse 15 says, For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Submit yourselves to every order of man. With well doing, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You hear me, church? What are they going to have to say against you when you're not here? They told me of a rapture. They told me that this Jesus was going to call them up out of here. And when that day comes, I guarantee you they'll be speechless. Because they wouldn't hear. The world don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. But we're not of the world. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. We'll start verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. You, that's why you're peculiar, because as many as thou hast given him. God chose us. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. You see, Christ is telling his Father, he said, Father, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished with that in which you have given me to do. Can we say that? Can we going to be able to say that? No, we can. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, the work that he done, it can. Amen. Verse 5 says, now, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thy, thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all, known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out of thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, verse 9, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He said, I pray for them. He said, I don't pray for the world. But those that God hath given him out of the world, out of this place, we belong to him. And all, thy, all mine are thine, Christ said. All that you've given me are yours, Father. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world. You shine in light in a dark place. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, 
but thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So we should be strangers in this world. We need to look at our lives and if we're blending in with the world, if people look at us and say that we look like we're the rest, look like anybody else, you just like everybody else. How many times you heard that? You just like everybody else. I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be like everybody else. If it comes down to it, I want him to drag, drag him in the street and scourge him and whip him because he's a Christian. He believes in Jesus. Because the day's coming. The day's coming. And our Savior, He sees. He sees everything. His eyes are on the sparrows. I know He's on you. I know He's on us. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy word is true. As Thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me, through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. The world will know. The world will know. It may be at the end of the tribulation. It might be in the mid-tribulation. Uh, they're going to know. They're going to know because we're going to be gone. Those that haven't been blinded, those that aren't reprobate, they're going to know. we got to put on Christ. We have got to put on Christ because that day is coming. That day is coming. And Jesus Christ is our shepherd through this life. He come before us and He made a way for us to go. He said, My sheep, they hear my voice. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. See, instead of being wandering around in this world lost, Christ came to show us the way. And it's so simple. It's so simple to follow Him. All you got to do is deny yourself. All you got to do is take up your cross and follow Him. Follow Him. He's merciful. He is a gracious, loving God. Until we realize, until we build a relationship with Him to where He is the biggest part of our day, We've got work to do. If you're not going to bed talking to Him, praying, waking up with Him in your every thought, if any distress or trouble you have during the day, if He's not your first go-to, you may need to stop and think and ask God to intervene. Because when we rely on ourselves to make decisions, we create problems big time. But it's at the point where we truly can trust in God that we can have peace. Because it's in Him we have liberty. It's Him that gets, shows us mercy. You know, I think it's been 
last winter, I was working up in North Alabama, and I, I told Brother Kent this, I believe, and I was just fed up with people and things, and I asked God, I said, God, what would you have me to do? Because I've always got, i got a brother that calls me all the time. He said, man, I'm just waiting for God to show me that big neon sign to show me what I need to do. I, you know, I, where, where can I make some money? What do I need to do? And I tell him every time, I said, hey, I said, Christ said, sell all that I have and give to the poor. He said, take up my cross and follow me. I said, if you really want to follow God, get rid of it all. And boy, those words smacked me in the face that day. And I was praying in my spirit. I said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And he just ever so politely said, sell it all. Sell it. Do as, you do as my word says. And I said, Lord, I'm going to give it all to you. And I went home that day and I put everything I had on Craigslist. And I said, Lord, I said, I'm going to put it all out here. I said, I don't know. I just pray that will be done. I'm sitting here thinking, Lord, I said, I hope somebody don't come by everything because I'm going to be in a tizzy. <laughs> but, you know, he took care of it. First, being willing. Willing to get rid of it. And he got rid of it. He got rid of what he seen fit that I needed to get rid of at the time he seen fit for me to get rid of it. And I can see his divine hand on every little bit. I sold a few things that got me through a few weeks and the time got harder. Then I run all my help off and I still had all this stuff on. I said, Lord, help me. But as it finally, things started falling into place and if it wouldn't have been for God's time, I would have been on my face still today because there wouldn't have been no hope. But I left it up to Him. I left it up to Him. And it's been such a blessing. And that's, I struggled, I struggled, and I struggled, and I struggled. But somehow or another, he took 90 and turned it into 900. God made a way. And until we can build up that faith and that trust and keep doing it, continue in that faith. One time ain't good enough. You got to continue in that. Don't get back and get haughty again and put yourself back in the situation in which you come out of. He's delivered you. Keep putting your faith and trust in Him. Not in your own self. Stop and ask God before you make any decisions. Pray about it. Pray about it. Ask God to give you protection each and every day because you're going to need it. Delight thyself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of thine heart. He'll give you the desires of thine heart. And if your heart's desire is seeking Him and trusting Him, you're going to be walking on streets of gold one day. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask for? We have got to work on our relationship with our Savior. If I don't come home and see my wife every day, she's mad. She might not talk to me. <laughs> I don't want to make my Lord mad where He don't talk to me. Because when it gets to the point where He's not talking to me, I know I'm in trouble. Amen. So read your Bibles. Be strong in your faith. Don't be afraid to tell somebody about Jesus. Don't be afraid to do what's right even in opposite, when opposition's all around you. Don't be afraid to be that light in the darkness. If you're struggling with something, just give it over. The Bible said, cast your cares upon Him for He cares for you. Christ said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. He'll carry those burdens for you, but you've got to be willing to give them to him. You've got to be willing to let go of them. And anything that might be attached to them, just let him have it. Because all that stuff's going to perish. All that stuff's going to perish. And we are but a shadow passing through this land. But we're supposed to be a light. I'm gonna, that's what happens when you only get two notes, three notes. I'll keep going because I ain't going to let him have it. 
Ephesians 2 and 11. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to start in 11, verse 11. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in past time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make him in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, hear me, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You are citizens of the household of God through the blood of Christ and no more strangers to God because we know that the Bible said God cannot look on sin. He cannot look on sin. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ that we have access to God. And He can hear us and He's watching and He knows your thoughts. He's a discerner of thoughts. He knows where our hearts is. He knows our heart's desire and our heart's intent. And no matter how hard we struggle. Sometimes we still fall. But He's there for us if we're struggling to reach Him. If we're pushing towards that more. Learning and loving and living our lives for our Savior, which is to come. Any questions? Any comments? Anybody got anything to add? Anything to say?